wanted to talk today about some of the bone tools that we find in the southwest prehistorically. These date from about 1250 to about 1350. Lots of different forms. We had the privilege of working a, a site that was almost pH neutral. It was not quite seven. It was a little bit alkaline. But uh, bone preserved beautifully and hair preserved beautifully. And we have a lot of great forms, uh, a lot of good things to talk about today. Let me get around behind the camera. And we'll go over some of these and discover what animals they came from. These are cut from the femur of a deer or an antelope sometimes. Bones are hollow and they make this wonderful little ring. And we found these with carvings uh, where they were worn as rings on your finger. I found actually, I've seen burials with them actually on the finger, worn like a, a ring finger. But you also see them in hair. They're used to them for... Uh, uh, in their hair to hold braids and things. We have um, one of the most common tools we find. We find this one all the time. This is the ulna of a deer or an antelope in some cases. And they like to make this particular awl tool out of that bone because it's got this wonderful notch. This is your funny bone. When you bump your elbow and you, you feel that like electric shock, that's, that nerve runs right through there. That's why that happens. But it also makes a great place for your finger when you're using that tool. That's why they made so many of these. We see dozens and dozens and dozens of these. We've got another ulna here. This is an interesting one. That's another ulna, another little elbow bone. But what's the animal? I mean, we know those are deer and antelope. But what ulna is that? And I, when I first saw them, I thought dog. Yeah, but I never really confirmed it. So what I want to do today, of course, what I did is I ran over to the uh, zoological osteo material, which I know everybody has in their closet. I do. <laughs> we're going to look at, uh, we'll come over here, we're going to look at, I don't have a dog, but I have a coyote. Here's a coyote. Let's see if we can find an all. Oh, there's an all. Okay, there's the all of a coyote. And let's compare that to our ulna. And it's definitely not him. First of all, the coyote's way too big. And it's just not the same shape or form. So let's look at a fox. Let's put this back so we don't mix that up. Take a peek at I have a red fox. Volpes Volpes. Which is one of your larger foxes. Oh, there we go. Oh, now that's a little more size-wise, but it's not the same bone. That's not the ulna of a fox. Let's try a bobcat. Bobcat. Let's find the ulna. Where's the ulna? Oh, look at that. That's interesting. This bobcat uh, broke his uh, fibula and it healed rather poorly. Old injury on that. Oh, here's the only Oh, look at that. Oh, now that looks like our... Ta-da! There he is. Definitely. There's the modern one, and there's the prehistoric one. That is the ulna of a bobcat. All of these are prehistoric bobcat ulnas made into an awl. Those are basically all awls, but this is made from a deer bone. Here you can see one that's been split, but has not been formed into the perfect tool yet. This is one in progress. Make that little awl out of that very hard part of that bone. This is a deer uh, radius bone. And I just happen to have a deer right over here. So we're going to take a look at Here is the radius right there. That's a deer radius. And see that proximal end has this knob form on it like that. And there's your prehistoric one. There it is. Look at the patina on that from use. 
That is a deer radius that these awls were made out of. And you see there's quite a few of them. Now another bone that we talked about a little bit, that we talked about the deer ulna. There's the ulna of the deer. Usually this is broken, it has a little more to it. And you see that notch? That's this part. Here we are with the prehistoric one. That's this. And there's the awl. And they like to use that because it's a very, you get a really good grip on that. That's a deer ulna. I'm not sure which bone that is. It's, it's probably deer or antelope. All of these so far are basically awls. A lot of them are weaving tools. Uh, some are hairpins. These real long, pointy. These are hairpins. You braid your hair, whirl, make the hair uh, whirls. There's one out of a turkey bone. <laughs> Most of them are uh, deer or antelope bones. We do have these turkey bones that have been carved into awls. And they have that little hollow. Of course, turkey bones are hollow. So they may have had a specific function. It could have been just as generic as any other awl that we have. These are rib scrapers. See where they're fashioned and shaped. Turkey bone flutes find a lot of these and the preservation was so good that they still play that's good preservation that's a good one I want to show you this little bone needle fabulous little piece look at that <laughs> you talk about good sight preservation there's a little bone needle normally that would rot away for sure any acid in the soil would destroy that. That's a beauty. A lot of times you see them drilled. These awls have been drilled. These are probably weaving tools. Probably had a, a cotton thread or cord through there. And then when we were doing the weaving, I have a uh, video up on the Maya doing weaving. You'll see a tool a lot like this. I thought this was fun. It has these little notches, these little carved zigzag in the tip. And I, oft, I speculated that that might be used to make impressions in clay or make a little pattern, sort of like pinking shears, but uh, to make a little pattern in the clay, maybe. Really nice long awls. This is a beauty here. Look at that. Wow. That is good preservation. Yeah, that's drilled, too. Now, that could be a, used in weaving. This is uh, it's such a big bone. It's obviously an elk bone. Big, heavy bone, and it's been cut into a gouge. It obviously, was used this way for probably for scraping. That's how this got worn flat. And this one is definitely a weaving tool. That's a shuttle. Look at that. Wow. Looks like ivory. Look at the wear on that. And that was used for some very fine fabric or, or material. You can see how, how finely that's polished. Wow. Lovely, lovely. A lot of form, a lot of function, a lot of different animals. Commonly the animals they ate, and they utilized the tools. They utilized the bones to make the tools.